Hello again! As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today we're going to be going over the components of an Arduino Uno board. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the analog inputs, the digital inputs, outputs, we're going to be talking about the IC chip, we're going to be talking about how to power the Arduino board, and give you an overview of this hardware. So it's important to understand when you're going to be building Arduino projects, there are a number of components that go into the Arduino project. Obviously you have the code, so the code that you're going to be uploading to the Arduino board, you have the shields, you have the modules, you have the servos, the mortars, the LEDs, so on and so forth, but the thing that ties it all together is the Arduino board itself. So by understanding how this Arduino board works and how it communicates with all of the different components, you'll get a better idea of how to build Arduino projects. Now I am going to be talking about the Arduino Uno board today, so it is important to understand whenever you start talking about Arduino boards, there there's a lot of Arduino boards out there, right? The good part about open source is anybody can go out there and grab the plans and build their own version of something. The bad part about open source is anybody can go out there and build their own version of something. So this, the uh, the Uno is basically the reference board. This is, this is like the main board. This is the quintessential board that was created for Arduino. Uh, and then other folks have come along and created all kinds of different versions of the board. So if you understand how the Uno works, you'll have a better idea of how these other boards work. But just realize if you go out there and you buy a mega board or a feather board or any of the other thousand boards that now exist uh, built based off the Arduino platform, you may have to go and do a little bit of research and most likely, no, I'm not going to do a thousand different classes on a thousand different boards because <laughs> there is a certain point a uh, tech professional has to learn how to use Google. And so once I show you how this board operates past that, I leave, I leave the rest uh, for you and Google to figure out. So we're going to be talking about the Arduino Uno board today, give you an idea of how this thing works and how you connect stuff to it. Um, and yeah, so uh, let's get into this video. Now, before I get into the class, I do have to talk about the sponsors, because the sponsors are the ones that help pay the bills, pay for silicondiscourse.com and such. So you have Cumulus Networks. Cumulus Networks wants to know your thoughts on web scale networking. Fill out their survey, and you could win an Apple Watch. Cumulusnetworks.com forward slash Eli. Geist. Geist builds and delivers rack PDUs ultra quick in as few as five days for standard units made in America. Hashtag sexy PDUs. Geistglobal.com. Veeam. Free backup for PCs, VMs, and Linux. All at Veeam.com. Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a 12-week web development, iOS, and UX design boot camp. Intended to get full-time job in the industry. Learn to code at devmountain.com. INE. INE specializes in network training with hands-on labs, on-site boot camps, and a focus on delivering the best in online networking courses at INE.com. Plixer. With Screwdizer and Flowdata, users can determine what traffic is on network, who is regenerating traffic, and who is receiving it at Plixer.com. And finally, Gilware Data Recovery. Gilware partners with IT professionals to offer their end-users data recovery services and digital forensics. Find out more at Gilware.com. As I always say, don't really care if you thumb up, thumb down, leave a comment, or subscribe, but if you can click on those sponsor links below, that's what makes the sponsors happy, which then helps me get get paid, which allows me to do videos like this. Now the first question that has to be asked, uh, if you're going to be using an Arduino board, is how do you power this darn thing? How do you get electricity into it? And the good part about Arduino is they've made this easy too. So this is not a horribly finicky device as far as power is concerned, and there are definitely multiple ways of being able to power an Arduino board. Now if we go over and we take a look at the desktop, uh, we can see that different ways that you can power the Arduino board depending on the circumstances. So the first way that you can power the Arduino board is simply by using the USB connection. So if you go out there and you buy an Arduino kit and you open up the kit and you can't figure out how you're supposed to power the board, uh, the fact of the matter is that the USB connection itself will be able to power the board and allow you to do all the experiments you want. Question comes though is, you know, once you get past the um, uh, your initial projects and you want to deploy the Arduino into the real world, well, then how are you going to power it then? The cool part is at that point, it has a little barrel connector for power, and you can power it either using a, uh, a power adapter such as this that you can pick up for, I think, like $7 off of Adafruit, or you can even power it from a battery. So on here, they have a voltage regulator. This will support anywhere between 7 to 12 volts DC. 
DC. Uh, and so basically you can plug in anything that is between 7 volts DC into the barrel connector and that will be able to power the Arduino board and that will also be able to power many of the other components that you all have on here. So small motors, LED lights, all of those kinds of things. So the power is pretty simple. Uh, as far as batteries are concerned, uh, you can plug in a just basic 9 volt battery uh, such as this. They also have battery packs that allow you to use AA batteries. They have battery packs that allow you to use lithium ion batteries. So this will be one of those circumstances where you have to think about what are your power requirements for the device going to be. Is this device going to simply get screwed into the wall somewhere and never move? And if that's the case, then you probably just want something that you can just plug into the wall, a power adapter such as this. On the other hand, if you're going to be putting this onto, let's say, something like a robot, the, then you have to think about the, the battery. You do have to realize with the battery is different batteries will run through power uh, more quickly than others. So if you're just going to do some kind of, let's say, competitive robotics league, simply using something like a 9-volt battery uh, may make sense because you can just plug it in and work with your device uh, immediately. On the other hand, if you're going to do some kind of autonomous robotic device that's going to be out in the field, uh, so you're going to put this out in your lawn, you're going to put this out in some area, a 9-volt battery may not have enough power for you uh, for the long term, and so therefore you may have to go to something like a lithium-ion battery. That kind of thing is a decision that you'll have to figure out uh, whenever you're designing your project. The important thing to realize with the Arduino is that you have many options for your power. Uh, and so almost no matter what kind of project you're going to be doing, there will be a power option for you. Now that we've talked about powering the Arduino, let's just do a brief overview of the components of the Arduino itself. So basically right here, this is where you have your USB jack. Now depending on what model um, Arduino board you get. This may be the old version of USB or it may be a micro USB connector. That just depends on whoever designed and built your particular Arduino board. This of course is the barrel power connector uh, that's on here. Then if we go over, these are the internal power pins for when you're going to be designing your projects. So this gives power out to your components such as your LED lights, your servos, those types of things. These are the analog connectors. These are the digital connectors up here. And then right here in the middle, this is the IC chip. So this is the brain or the microcontroller for the whole Arduino board. And what's important to understand about this, uh, this microcontroller is this is really what makes the Arduino board do everything that it does. Essentially, all of the these different pins and everything on here allows this to work. And so when we talk about things such as using an Arduino to prototype uh, for, for projects, what we're doing is we're building off the Arduino board, but theoretically what you could do is you could literally just take this microcontroller, uh, basically have it ripped off the board, be able to plug it into a breadboard of its own and solder everything that you need. So essentially all the components that are on this board Board, allow this this microcontroller to be functional so if you wanted to design your own project and actually ship it out to scale so let's say you're going to build like 10,000 or 100,000 of these things what you would do is you would design it based off the Arduino board figure out how everything works and then what you do is you would literally just use the microcontroller itself and then design all of the electronics around the microcontroller and get rid of all this other stuff uh, beyond that on here you have the reset button up here so Basically, this is just a standard reset button uh, like you would see in most projects. You then have the, the on, the power light here. So when this thing is plugged in, you will see that the, uh, the power light is on. See, so now the power light is on. Then beyond that, uh, we have this is the LED. It's called pin 13. So basically, these different pins up here can send out signals to turn things on and off. Well, this allows you to be able to turn on and off pin 13 so that you can verify that your code works. So one of the big problems whenever you're designing uh, projects, especially hardware projects, is when... 
when is the problem your code and when is the problem your hardware? So by turning this LED on in your code, what you can show is that your code is functional. So the problems that you may be running into are because of your code and not because of the hardware itself. Beyond that, down here, you have the little uh, transmit and receive lights. So these will blink and flash when they are sending or receiving information from the board. Um, so let me see. So now I'm sending information to the board right now. And see, now it kind of lit up a little bit. So it's showing you uh, that it's sending or receiving information. So these are the basic components of the board uh, to understand when you're looking at this for the first time. So now that you know the overall components of the board, we can go in and talk about the individual pins themselves. So the first pins that we'll talk about are the power pins. So we have the reset pin right here. So this allows you to uh, connect like a reset button that's external uh, to the, the reset button that is on the board itself. Then from here, as I've talked about before, you can power LED lights, motors, servos, and all of that directly from the board itself. So you'll see there's a 3.3 uh, volt pin here so if you need 3.3 volts for whatever you're doing uh, you can connect to this particular pin or there is a 5 volt pin here and so you can connect to the 5 volt pin if you need 5 volts for whatever project you're doing whenever you're connecting electrical devices you need both the positive and the negative uh, so the power and the ground so when you need to be able to ground your your, the, your components uh, you have two ground connectors right here so this will allow you to ground your different components and then then you have the VIN pin right here. So what the VIN pin does is it allows for whatever the reference voltage coming into the Arduino for that to be passed through. So as I talked about with the power coming into the Arduino, this can be anywhere from 7 volts to 12 volts. So let's say you have some kind of device that needs more than 5 volts of power. Since you may have either 9 or 12 volts coming in, you can actually tap off that amount of voltage off off of this VIN pin. So these are the, the pins that are going to be used for, for power and powering the, the little devices that you're going to be connecting to the Arduino board. Now the next pins to look at are the analog in pins. So whenever we're talking about dealing with electronic components, generally we're going to be talking about either analog or digital components. So analog components, basically they read the amplitude of a signal. So you, you get a, a wave uh, and basically depending on how strong or how light the signal is, that will tell the Arduino what's going on. Whereas with digital, digital is either on or off and depending upon how the on or off is sent that will tell the Arduino what to do. Uh, so what's important to understand is that there are two different types of components. There are digital components and analog components and so the pins that you will use uh, for, for your components will simply depend upon what devices you are connecting to the Arduino. So for analog, a lot of analog devices are things like, uh, like light sensors or temperature humidity sensors they may be analog and so you would plug those types of sensors into these particular pins and so with this this is analog in only so when you get up to the digital uh, with the digital pins you can either set the pins to be input or output for the analog down here it is only input so you would connect a light sensor to this you would connect the temperature sensor to this information coming in in analog form will go to these pins in order to send information out out in analog form. We'll talk about that in a second. Now the final pins that we need to talk about then are the digital pins. Now what's interesting about the digital pins versus the analog pins is that you can set these to be either input or output. So this is why if you ever look at Arduino code, whenever they're going to be setting the variables, they'll set the pin and then they'll set the pin mode and they'll say whether it is input or whether it's output. So that's very important. Uh, with the digital pins, you can't just reference them directly. You do have to say is information going in or is information information going out and to be clear it can only go one way at a time so when you're looking at these uh, these digital pins uh, the, the first ones that you'll notice is 
pin 0 and pin 1 and these can be used for serial data connections so if you need to be able to send out uh, the serial data from the Arduino board you can connect to the pins there then past that you have pins 2 all the way up through 13 what's interesting about pin 13 is it does correspond to the LED light up here so basically when you trigger uh, pin 13 you will then also trigger that light that LED and so that can show you that your code did go over to the Arduino as it was supposed to and that it is actually running. Uh, so not only can you do simple things such as turn the LED either on or off, but you could have it blink. So basically every time the, the Arduino code loops, you could set this to be either on or off. And so it just keeps blinking. So it shows you that something is actually going on with the Arduino board. This can be very important as you start to get some more and more complicated projects because you screw up the resistance somewhere you have one bad electronic component you can start ripping your hair out when you can't figure out as I say is it the code not running or is it the hardware not working at least with that pin 13 you can see okay okay it's running the code it's running the code <laughs> now we can figure out what else is going on uh, beyond that uh, if you can look here you'll see these little squiggly lines so uh, pin three five six uh, what is this, 9, 10, uh, and 11. Uh, with these squiggly lines, these can actually be set to analog output. So if you need to be able to send out analog signals, to, to some kind of other uh, electronic device, you can use those particular pins in order to do it. So basically with these pins here, it does get to be a little bit confusing when you're trying to figure out what pin to connect to. Uh, but as long as you just keep in mind, essentially uh, the, the pins here, they're all digital. So either they're either on or off. When you're looking at the Arduino code, you'll see uh, when you set the, set the code for the pin, you'll either set it to low or too high, low is, low is off, high is on. Uh, so these are the analog pins. Basically the little squiggly ones are the ones that you can set to analog output if you need to send an analog signal for whatever reason. And the send and the receive for the serial data is on pins pins zero and pins one. And so basically these are the pins that you're going to be dealing with whenever you're building your Arduino projects. So that's really all there is to the Arduino Uno board. Uh, if you understand these basic little components, uh, it's pretty simple to understand what's going on. Uh, the big thing is understanding the analog inputs versus the digital input outputs, uh, understanding the power, understanding how to power the Arduino device, so on and so forth. Once you understand that, it's a really, really, really simple board. Do realize when, you, when you're talking about the Arduino, Arduinos were created for non-technology professionals. Uh, I would argue the Arduino is much like PHP in the coding world, as in it was designed for non-tech professionals in order to be able to create technology projects that actually work. Uh, the thing being with the Arduino is it's a lot like the PHP code is since since any Yahoo uh, can put something together, you can get some really, really, really confusing, weird projects out of it. But hey, as long as it works, it's good enough. Uh, the big thing to understand with these is how to power it. Again, it can take anywhere between 7 to 12 volts. You can power it off of a uh, power adapter. You can power it off the USB connection. You can power it off even a 9-volt battery. Uh, and then beyond that, you just go in there and you start you start playing around. Uh, to be clear, the different Arduino boards that you'll be, be picking up, they may be different. This is the Arduino Uno board. So this is the official one from Arduino itself. If you go out and you buy an Uno board from another manufacturer there might be some little differences to how all this stuff is laid out but basically same 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 but slightly different as they say so that's really all there is to it um, and that's that's one of the cool things with the Arduino pretty nifty neat little little uh, little board here so that's really all I have to say as far as the Arduino board is concerned. Uh, as always, uh, I enjoyed teaching this class. Uh, if you want to be able to ask me questions or join the conversation, you might want to go over and take a look at silicondiscourse.com. Regardless, I look forward to seeing you at the next video.